This man stands in front of a building and is about to have his dream come true. His dream is quite odd. He destroys the building and enjoys seeing it crumble to its ashes. No, he is not some kind of maniac. There is a very specific reason why he wants to do this. Vincenzo is a man of Korean origin who lives in Italy as a member of the strongest mafia family. He is the family's lawyer, who knows how to launder money and keep the mafia legally safe. Vincenzo has been adopted by an Italian mob boss named Fabio Cassano, who has recently died. Vincenzo carries out his father's last wish and visits a man from another mafia family. The man is quite arrogant because he believes the Cassano family is not going to hurt him now that Fabio is dead. However, Vincenzo explains to him that his father's last wish was for them to reach a settlement, so that's why he is here today. The man doesn't want to talk to him, so Vincenzo gets up and leaves. At that moment, a plane flies above the man's mansion and sprays everybody with some kind of liquid. The man comments that they sprayed their field last week. But this is all Vincenzo's plan. As it appears, this liquid is gasoline. Vincenzo lights a lighter and throws it on the ground, causing the place to torch. Then, Vincenzo goes to see his dead father's body before the funeral takes place. There, Fabio's biological son, Paolo, makes some fuss because he is jealous of Vin. He is angry because his father trusted Vincenzo more and gave all of the important missions to him. That night, Paolo sends three assassins to kill Vin, but the experienced lawyer tricks them and kills them first. Then, he calls Paolo while the latter drives into his mansion. As they talk on the phone, Paolo's supercar explodes. Vin warns him to leave him alone or else he will end up dead. He proclaims that he is going to leave Italy and asks Paolo not to search for him if he wants to stay alive. As Vin flies to Korea, he can't help but think of a secret room that is filled with plates of gold. But that's not just any room in any building. In the meantime, a woman named Cha Young attends the court to fight a legal battle in favor of a company named Babel. Some people are suing Babel because the medicine they have in circulation had several side effects on them. What's even more interesting is that Cha Young is fighting this legal battle against her own father, Yu Chan who is the lawyer of the people suing the company. Soon, Vin arrives in Korea and he grabs a taxi. The driver offers him some water, but the bottle is spiked and Vincenzo is put to sleep. When he wakes up, he is tied to the car and he sees the driver with his accomplice. The two men rob him and then knock him out. When he wakes up again, Vin has nothing left. Luckily, he sees some money on the ground and it appears to be enough to buy a bus ticket. Soon, Vincenzo arrives in Seoul and stands in front of the building he dreams of demolishing. A flashback shows us that a Chinese businessman who was also a criminal had reached out to him in order to ask him where he could hide some golden plates. He had some ideas but he didn't want to hide it in China. Vin had a connection in Korea, his assistant Cho, and came up with a plan. He bought a building in Cho's name and built a special room under the building. There, the Chinese businessman hid his gold. But the room with the gold also serves as a trap. If somebody learns about the underground room and tries to break into it, the building will crumble and become their grave. The Chinese businessman liked the plan and he went along with it. Today, the businessman is dead and his gold is left alone under the building. Vincenzo knows that he can steal the gold and become a rich man. When he meets with Cho, he is informed that several tenants are living in the building and many of its spaces are used for several purposes. Vincenzo is not worried about that as he believes he can find a way to get the tenants to live someplace else for a little while maybe by promising them to renovate their spaces for free. But the next morning, a representative from Babel appears and tells them that the company wants to buy this building and use it. Not only that but the man also makes them a generous offer. Vincenzo refuses the offer, and the man is surprised because the money is good. That night, Babel decides to take more severe measures, and a few armed men break into Cho's house because he is the legal owner of the building. They threaten to kill his family, and Cho is forced to sign the contract, selling the building to Babel. The next day, Cho is driving his car when he calls Vin to inform him about what happened. Suddenly, a truck hits him in an attempt to kill him. At the same time, a few thugs sent by Babel visit the building to warn the tenants that they have seven days available to leave. The tenants disagree with them, and things get heated really quickly. Cha Young and her father get involved, and the thugs give them a taste of their brutal strength. But then, Vincenzo appears and puts some order. After hitting one of the thugs, he also hits their leader, and makes him hang outside the window. He warns the man to leave but the leader of the thugs orders his men to attack Vin as soon as he is back to his feet. However, a few policemen appear and put an end to this confrontation. 
After this incident, Vin has a talk with Yu Chan and they realize that they can become possible allies since both of them have common interests, which means Babel is their enemy. Later, Vin visits Cho in the hospital and asks him if they are the only ones who know about the gold in the building. Cho declares that they are the only ones but it does not really matter because if Babel renovates the building in order to use it, they will find out about the gold. A flashback shows us that the Mafia had taken good care of the secret room and the people who worked on building it. Those people and the ones who transferred the gold were killed by another team later on. Vin goes back to Yuchan again and asks him to work together in order to stop Babel from evicting the tenants before their legal deadline. Vin's plan is to buy enough time so he can demolish the building and seize the gold. Cha Young hangs around her father's office and invites Vin to dinner because they are all work but no fun. During the dinner, she reveals that she works for a law firm named Wusong, and Babel is their client. In the meantime, Sun Ho, the president of Babel, meets with a secret figure playing hockey on ice. The man in the hockey costume throws some hockey discs at the president in order to hurt him. Sun Ho apologizes for his poor performance but the man is not taking any of that. He starts beating him up using the hockey stick. Elsewhere, Cha Young attends a Wusong meeting and she starts feeling a bit weird working for them because they are probably bad people. Her in turn, a man named Zhang, overhears the boss speaking on the phone and tells Cha Young the same thing because he gives Babel the green light to get the tenants out. But that's not the only thing about to happen. Babel wants to move straight on and demolish the building in order to renovate it before using it as a lab. Vin has to come up with a plan fast, so he asks the tenants to work hard and prepare something like a small festival. When the thugs arrive near the building with the bulldozers, they see people partying and having fun. They could try to ruin this party but maybe that is not a good idea, because Vincenzo has invited the Italian ambassador in Korea to attend the festivities. When the police see the thugs, they know that these men are sent by Babel but they plead with them to go because they will have to get involved if anything goes down tonight. Over the next couple of days, Vin studies Korean laws as he tries to find a way to extend the period of grace for the tenants. Keeping the tenants in the building will stall Babel from demolishing the building and finding the gold. Surprisingly, Yu Chan receives a phone call from one of the scientists who used to work for Babel's medicine development team. In fact, he was the head of research for a specific drug known to cause side effects. The man explains to Yu Chan that many of Babel's drugs cause side effects but the one he was working on was something else. When they injected it into a volunteer, the man died. But that's not all. Babel is trying to develop drugs with both meanings of the word. They want people to get addicted to their medicine just like junkies. The scientist decided to flee because he believes Babel will not allow him to live after the incidents he has witnessed. Yu Chan wants him to testify in court but the man asks if the lawyer can guarantee his safety. Unfortunately, the lawyer only tells him that he will do whatever he can, which is not good enough for the scientist. Later, Yu Chan receives a phone call from a woman he has represented in court in the past, Ms. O. Oh. The woman was injured in jail but she is fine now. Vincenzo follows him to see the woman, and he gets an unsettling emotion when he sees her, even though the woman seems not to recognize him. That night, Vin meets with Babel's rep and asks him to give him two months before Babel makes moves to renovate the building. The man is not willing to accept his proposal but Vin has his mafia ways of convincing people. As it appears, he has been gathering clues on the man and he has some pictures of him with his secret girlfriend. The rep finds himself in a tight spot, so Vin tells him that he has to make a decision soon. The time is pressing even more for him, as the thugs are getting ready to demolish the building after they force the tenants out. The rep gives them a call and asks them to stop. While Vin has won a battle, Babel makes another move, and an assassin causes an explosion in a hotel where some research team members are staying. The next morning, Yu Chan learns about the incident from the news and he assumes that the company is silencing the doctors who worked on the development of one of their drugs. He rushes to the crime scene and sees the police wrapping up the case way too fast. Yu Chan scolds them and tries to force them to follow the procedure. But Vin tries to calm him down when he sees two men staring down at them. With his experience as a former Mafia member, he knows that they will become the next targets of these assassins if they continue causing mayhem here. In the meantime, one of the most ruthless lawyers of Wusong, a woman named Choi, meets with Sun Ho. After the meeting, she tells her boss that she has a hard time believing this man is running Babel. Maybe it is a bit overstretched but she believes that Sun Ho could just be a puppet used by the person who is really running the evil company. Meanwhile, Yu Chan calls the scientists again to try to change his mind. Although he is close to achieving it, 
The man needs some time to think about it because his life is at stake. Elsewhere, Cha Young meets with Choi and things are tense between them. Both women are ferocious and they want to prevail over one another. Later, Cha Young also meets with her father, who questions her moral compass. The two of them end up fighting about which end of the river they should be at. So Cha Young grabs a drink to deal with the stress. Around midnight, a policeman bangs on the scientist's door at the hotel he is staying in claiming that there was a robbery taking place and he has to talk to the guests. The scientist figures out that this man is not a real policeman so he jumps outside the room and runs to the docks. There, he tries to call Yu Chan but the lawyer walks outside to smoke. Vincenzo sees the incoming call and he knows very well who this man is, but he decides to silence the call because he is afraid the situation will get out of hand if this man testifies in court. Eventually, the Babel assassins find the man, and they kill him. When Yu Chan goes back inside, a truck drives right through the glass and hits the two lawyers. Yu Chan is dead, while Vin manages to survive and is taken to the hospital. Cha Young visits him after her father's funeral, and Vincenzo suddenly wakes up. Not only is he awake, but he is also ready for action. Vin assumes that Babel has something to do with Yu Chan's death even though he has no evidence about it just yet. A few days later, Cha Young is convinced that Babel is behind her father's death. When she sees on the news that the head scientist working on some of Babel's drugs was washed up dead near the shore. Without wasting a second, she goes to Wu Song's boss and hands him her resignation. Choi is right there in the office and taunts her, saying that she cannot manage the pressure. As for Vin, he returns to the murder scene and examines it more carefully. As he uncovers several details about the incident, he calls his friend Cho and asks him to make a move on their own. Soon, Sun Ho returns home and finds a bunch of syringes stuck on his pillow, a message sent to him by Vin. The next day, Cha Young meets with the tenants at Gumba Plaza building and tells them that she is going to continue her father's work and stand by their side. Suddenly, two policemen appear and arrest her on some foolish accusations set up by Wu Song. When Vin learns about this, he rushes to the police station and shows them who's boss. He asks the policemen if they have any proof about their accusation, and since they don't, he just takes Cha Young out of there. Just outside the police station, in turn Jang presents himself to Vin and tells him he is a huge fan. Even though this man seems sweet, he starts acting more weird as time goes by. Soon, Vin prepares to make his next move and takes Cha Young to visit the man who was driving the truck that killed her father. Vin wants to know who gave him the order but the man acts tough initially. Vin knows that he can't reason with a man like that but also presents him with the facts he knows. He knows that somebody reduced his sentence to just two years even though he was sentenced to more time due to the nature of his crimes. So there is no way this man is not associated to somebody with lots of power. Then, Vin uses his dark personality to convince the man, saying that he will find people in jail willing to kill him. The man cracks and gives them a name, but claims he never met this man in person. Vin gets up to leave but then decides to terminate the man indirectly, yelling and thanking him for agreeing to work with him and be his witness in court. A policeman hears this, and things are set in motion. That same night, a few inmates corner this man and kill him while the policemen just stand there. One day later, Vin makes his next move, or to state it another way, his next move finds him. Babel's rep tries to attack Vin in order to get him out of his way, but he ends up being choked out by him. Then, Vin uses the rep to set up a meeting with the man who gave the order to the truck driver. Vincenzo attacks him and now has both of them on his plate. Vin grabs the man's pistol and comments that this gun is neither used by the military nor the police which means these men have some strong connections. Vin wants to know who gave him the order to kill Yu Chan, but the man doesn't want to speak. Out of a sudden, Vin proves he is serious and shoots the rep. In the next scene, we see that Vin has tricked and trapped Choi in a laundry store. While he is on the phone with her, a truck shoots its lights on her and rides toward her. Choi is afraid for her life. But the truck stops as Vin tells her that he knows she gave the order to kill Yu Chan because he was standing in their way on several fronts. Eventually, this battle is left unfinished as Vin leaves, and the truck drives away. One night later, a contamination team comes into Babel's lab and their leader tells the scientist to evacuate the lab for a couple of hours because they need to work. After they are done, one of the team members is revealed to be Vincenzo who lights a lighter and lets it hit the ground. The whole place is torched, because Vin didn't spray for cockroaches and viruses in the lab. He watered it with gasoline in order to destroy it. A short flashback shows us that everything was a setup. Vin pretended to shoot Babel's rep, but the man was just pulled back by Yu Chan's old associate, 
who helps Vin and Cha Young. The other tied-up man believed that Vin killed the rep so he revealed all the information the lawyers needed. Back in the present, Sun Ho arrives at the lab and starts screaming when he sees it on fire. Two of Vin's team members vamp the gas up and cause another explosion which sends Sun Ho flying backward. All of a sudden, an expensive car appears and the real owner of Babel steps out of it. This man is none other than Jang who apparently pretends to be an intern lawyer while he is the boss of the most corrupt corporation in the country. While he has an angry look on his face, Vin and his team flee. But these people are not just hired muscle, they are the people who were represented by Yu Chan. They decided to help Cha Young as a form of respect for what her father did for them. The next day, Vin decides to meet Sun Ho in person but he has to do it in an indirect way. He hits the gym, and helps Sun Ho with his weights while he bench presses. While he helps him with his exercise, Vin pretends he is a fan of him and asks irrelevant questions such as if he was inspired by George Soros. As a lawyer and a former member of the Mafia, Vincenzo is a good judge of characters. When he meets with Cha Young again, he exclaims that Sun Ho was not particularly clever, which makes him believe that he is not the real person running Babel. Vin believes that their next target should be to look into the life of Director Gill, a man who is in charge of drug development. But that has to wait because there is a new problem coming up. The victims suffering the side effects of Babel's medicine want to pull back on the case because an intermediary offered them large sums of money. Cha Young gathers them in her father's office and tries to change their mind. But the victims seem to believe that there is no chance of them winning the case. So, their best option would be to accept the settlement money and move on. Elsewhere, Sun Ho sets up an event with some reporters and congratulates the researchers who worked on a new medicine that is going to be in circulation soon. But as he congratulates the researchers, one of them spits blood on him and collapses on the floor. In the meantime, the thugs visit a pizza restaurant in Gunga Plaza, and they pretend they just found a nail in their food. They take some pictures of the nail in the food in order to speak poorly of it on social media, but Vin walks in and tells them to stop. The thugs are tired of Vin getting involved, so they decide to attack him. Vin is good with his hands and is able to beat them up. The leader of the thugs is the last of them standing and Vin asks the man to pay for his food. Trembling, the leader of the thugs pays the pizza chef and then runs outside. When Cha Young has a moment alone with Vin, she asks him to use a move on her to see how much it hurts. She saw Vin using this move on one of the thugs. Vin moves his hand near her forehead, and the two of them grow closer even under this circumstance. The two of them are interrupted by Jang, who enters the office and opens an informal beef with Vin. The two of them decide to resolve their differences by visiting a restaurant and seeing which one of them can eat the most spicy food. The next day, Vin meets with the tenants again as one of them, who is a monk, finishes his long prayer and fasting period. Vin tells them that he has everything set up for them. They will be able to move to a different building and live in some new apartments for free while he renovates Gunga Plaza. When he is finished, they will come back and live in their apartments, only when they come back their apartments will be much better. One by one, Vin puts all matters into place. The next thing he has to take care of is the intermediary who tried to bribe Babel's victims. Vincenzo steals the man's hidden assets as he has been embezzling money for a while and donates it to a few non-profit organizations. Then, Vin accompanies Cha Young to a confrontation against Choi and Wusong's boss. During the meeting, Choi hears Vin's voice and recalls the voice of the man who was speaking to her on the phone that night when she was cornered in the laundry store. Could this be the same man? One day later, both parties meet outside the court but Vin's real intention is not to go on trial against Wusong because he knows they are going to lose. Therefore, he has come up with another plan, and he has recruited the tenants of the plaza to protest just outside the court until the trial is cancelled and moved to another date. The next time the court is about to take place, Choi and her boss meet with the judge and ask him to make a decision in their favor. The judge proclaims that he might be able to help them but he also asks Wusong's boss for a small donation in cash. When the trial starts, Cha Young pretends she is sick in order to buy herself some time. The tenants have sabotaged the building, and water starts flowing in from everywhere until the judge reschedules the trial. Later, Vin walks around the building and uses a metal detector to find where the gold is located exactly. However, he has no idea that he is being followed by a goofy agent who suspects him of being a mafia member. Although the agent catches him in the act, 
The height of the window's design does not allow him to see the detector. From his point of view, it seems like Vin is kneeling down to pray. Elsewhere, in turn Jang invites Sun Ho, Choi, and Wuzin's boss to a meeting room to give them a presentation. He begins by saying that Babel's creator was Sun Ho's father, but the current president was not his only son. He reveals that he is Sun Ho's brother and the person who is really running Babel. Wu Song's boss and Choi are forced to clap for him, but the latter shows her anger later when she is left alone in her office. Zhang shows everyone how ruthless he is when he sets his new plan in motion. First, his people beat one of the court rivals, and Director Gil injects him with drugs. Then, they plant some money on all of the other medicine victims. Soon, all of them are taken to the police station, but Chai Young rushes there to defend them. The policemen tell her that these people have been working together and they have been stealing money from Babel. Cha Young tries to tell them that they do not have any real evidence but now it's her word against Wu Song. Before the trial, Jang approaches Vin and Cha Young to tell them that they can't go against Wu Song because they are a big firm. He asks Cha Young to think about this again and not to get carried away by Vin. Their meeting doesn't end on the best note but they have to save their mean feelings for later. When it's time to go on trial again, Vin and Cha Young know that the judge is not going to be on their side so they have to do something about it. After Director Gil is called up as a witness, Cha Young calls Gil's wife as her witness. Apparently, his wife does not love him anymore and has agreed to reveal a secret that Director Gil uses drugs. With this revelation, Vin asks the court not to take Gil's words seriously and the judge is forced to comply because he can't go against decisions that are so obvious and would destroy his career. With that, Cha Young has bought herself and her clients more time. As they say, live to fight another day. Zhang is very angry with these developments and yells at his brother. Sun Ho asks him if he is going to kill him like he did with their father, and a flashback takes us back in time to show us what happened. Their father fell sick, and Zhang decided to kill him by having Director Gil inject him with drugs. Back in the present, Zhang is surprised his brother knows about this because he thought he had no idea. He grabs a fork and threatens his brother with it if he ever speaks of this again. In the meantime, the tenants are having dinner before they move to their new apartments for a couple of months when a beggar asks them for a bite. The beggar starts telling them a crazy story. He claims that he lived on the streets a few years ago and watched silently as some men built this building. He saw with his own eyes those men carrying many plates of gold and hiding them under this very building. The tenants laugh at him because this story is too crazy to believe but the beggar has proof. He says that the men who built this place were killed, but the beggar managed to get hold of the phone of one of those men. In fact, the beggar has that phone with him and shows them a picture of the worker holding a golden plate. The next morning, Vin tells the tenants that it is time for them to move to their new apartments just like they agreed, but the tenants have changed their mind. Of course, they do not reveal their true reason for wanting to stay but rather project that they care about this place and want to live here forever. In the meantime, Sun Ho gets his vice presidents from Babel to the hockey field and scolds them for their poor performance. As it appears, he mimics his brother's methods and he rules the company with an iron fist. After calling these men useless, he starts hitting them with hockey discs, and the VPs fall on the icy ground. As for Vincenzo, he follows Cha Young who's visiting Ms. O. Oh. The woman is not well, and a doctor reveals to them that she suffers from cancer. They will do anything they can to keep her alive, but the doctor can make no promises. Vin is very sad to hear the news as if this woman is important to him. Elsewhere, lawyer Choi meets with a man named Min Son who is the president of a bank. Choi wants him to invest a large amount of money in Babel, but the banker does not want to do that because he thinks associating his bank with Babel will not be good for them. However, Choi presses him hard and talks about some evidence she has on him. Basically, she blackmails him by threatening to reveal the truth to the public if he does not cooperate. With that said, Min Song changes his mind and shakes hands with Sun Ho. The next day, Cho informs Vincenzo that the Chinese businessman used to own an art gallery with expensive exhibits. He used to protect the entrance to the most expensive paintings with a security system based on the recognition of his eyes iris. Cho believes that he can steal the data from that art gallery and use it to open the safe under Gumba Plaza. At the same time, Min Song visits Ms. O in the hospital with the sole purpose of taunting her before she dies. The woman pretends she wants to tell him something and ask him to come closer, but she grabs him by his hair and gives him a hard time. Cha Young tries to pull him back, but she also destroys Min Song's hair. Later, Cha Young tells Vin that they need to get closer to this man and find out more information about him. According to the rumors she has heard, Min Song is gay and Vincenzo can try to seduce him. Vin does not like this idea at all 
but Cha Young and her father's former associate, Nam, won't leave him alone until he accepts. Vin gets to action the next day when he joins the same club as Min Song for horse riding. Vin opens the conversation and the two of them discuss about the art of riding. After managing to get Min Song's number, Vin tells Cha Young that he is feeling weird for doing this, but she convinces him to continue with their plan. Soon, Vin goes to dinner with Min Song and gets him drunk. When the conversation becomes more personal, Min Song approaches Vincenzo to tell him about his deepest secret. As it appears, he is the son of the man who was killed by Ms. O in the past. His father used to hit on the maids who worked in their house. But Mizo fought back and pushed his father. The man got injured and died after a while. The thing is, both Min Song and his mother witnessed the incident secretly. If they had called an ambulance, his father would be alive today, but they chose to kill him indirectly. The next day, the two of them go on another date at a fun fair. But Vin breaks Min Song's heart when he tells him that they can't be together. Min Song has fallen in love with him and waits outside his office in order to see him. Vin goes outside to meet him but tells him that he has to do something for him if he wants them to be together. Min Song is blinded by love and replies that he will do whatever is necessary. Soon, Babel sets up a press conference, and Sun Ho is about to sign the contract of the bank's investment along with Min Song. But when it's time for Min Song to sign, he says that he is not going to do it because Babel is an unethical company. Sun Ho is surprised and he understands that Vin has something to do with this when he sees him clapping with Cha Young. However, Min Song's mother appears and states that she is going to sign the contract on the bank's behalf. Apparently, she is the one who is in charge. Now it's time for lawyer Choi to laugh and a flashback shows us why. Choi had a meeting with Min Song's mother and threatened her that her secret would be revealed if she did not help her out. Somehow, Choi knows everything about her husband, but Vin is not done teaching Min Song a lesson. The tenants help him by abducting Min Song and throwing him in a room they have filled with smoke. Some of the other tenants have made themselves look like zombies, and they scare the hell out of Min Song. When the tenants allow him to escape the room, Min Song runs to Vin's feet and asks for his protection. Not only is Min Song publicly humiliated but he is also arrested. Because Cha Young has convinced some of his former employees to testify against him about the violent behavior he has had at work. Sun Ho is angry at Vincenzo and can't hold himself back but Jang tells him to calm down. Cha Young also goes face to face with Choi, and both women seem determined to beat each other. As a bunch of reporters gather around them, Cha Young exclaims that she will bring Babel to the ground because it is a company that works like it is a cartel. Meanwhile, everybody at Gumba Plaza has gone crazy with the story about the gold and they are looking for it. But apart from them, a few unknown thieves are also looking for the gold. Elsewhere, we see that Director Gil has moved away from Seoul because he believes Jang will make a move against him. He knows that Jang will consider him a liability and will probably try to kill him. Gil has communicated with a judge named In, and the latter has arranged some protection for him. In Sun Ho's house, he has arranged a dinner with some powerful people and he asks them to be on his side because everyone will benefit. However, one of the men is angry at him because he is trying to bribe them. His attitude will backfire as these men will be intercepted and abducted down the road. Back at the plaza, the tenants find the thieves and a fight breaks out between the two parties. At some point, Vincenzo also returns home and comes face to face with the thieves. That is an unfortunate event for the thieves, because they get beaten up by him and they have to flee the scene in humiliation. At the same time, Sun Ho takes the man he abducted to a container. One of them is the chief of the Bureau of Investigation Against Organized Crime and he is more open to working with Babel. The other man is not so open but he regrets it when Zhang walks in the container with a hockey stick and kills him. Wu Song's boss, Han, tells Zhang that he has to be more careful because killing people like that will get them in trouble. Zhang is blinded by his controlling nature and tells everybody that he can do whatever he wants. Han and Sun Ho are scared of him but Choi just smiles because she is crazy herself. After the incident at the plaza, Cha Young sleeps in Vin's house. The next morning, the two of them watch the news and learn about the death of the man who was killed by Jang. The two of them agree that their next move should be to uncover who is running Babel for real. Later, Vin makes another attempt to talk to one of the monks who used the room sitting just above the safe. Although Vin tries hard, the monk tells him that he can't leave this temple because he has dedicated his life to religion. Over the next couple of days, Cha Young and Vincenzo try to determine if there is anyone they can trust. Their best shot is to communicate with Judge In and see if he is willing to help them face Babel. When they meet with him, Judge In reveals that Director Gill is thinking of switching sides but he can't give them more information right now. But while Vin and his group try to think of ways to hurt Babel, 
Zhang has a video call with a high-ranked member of the Colombian cartel, telling him that Korea will become a drug paradise and prompting him to invest in Babel. The next day, Vin calls Judge in to ask him about Gil's location. The judge replies that he can't reveal the location of a possible witness. But Vin tells him that he knows the way to extract information from Gil, and proclaims that maybe his methods will bring some results, and gives Vin the director's location. Cha Young and Nam tag along with Vin and they go after Gil. They are able to find the former medical director of Babel but there is one caveat. Babel has found him first, and Gil is dead. Choi and Zhang are seen celebrating, but it appears that director Gil is not going to be their last victim. One day later, the authorities find a van full of dead people but these are not just any people, these are some of the people who are in a legal battle against Babel. The scene is made to look like an accident, but Vin and Cha Young visit the police station to express their opinion. They tell the officers that something fishy is going on here but the policemen are on Babel's payroll, so they are not going to do anything about it. Vincenzo decides to follow the policemen and sees them entering some gambling club to collect money. Then, the policemen go to the roof to count the money but Vin catches them in the act and takes a picture of them. The policemen know they are screwed, so they try to attack Vin. However, they only end up being beaten and tied to a chair. Vincenzo pushes them near the edge of a high building, while Cha Yum also joins them to play her part. Vin has no use for two policemen who can't do their job, but they give him their word that they are going to change. From now on, they are going to do their job properly. In the meantime, Mr. Han has gotten closer to Sun Ho and tells him that he should be the one to run Babel. Those words play on Sun Ho's hidden ambitions and he starts thinking about being the real boss of Babel. The next morning, Vincenzo declares that they have to fight Babel like the Mafia would do it. They will hurt them first and then they will destroy them. To begin with, they should start by humiliating the company. So they recruit the plaza's tenants to set up a YouTube show speaking poorly of Babel. Then, Vin wants to terrorize his enemies. He begins by writing a big red C letter on Han's wall. Then, he plays the same trick with the zombies he played earlier. And one of the supposed zombies writes the letter C on the window. And finally, he sends something that looks like a bomb to Sun Ho. The man is afraid for his life. But the bomb just proves to be a sign with the letter C on it. When Zhang and the rest of his people think about it, they realize that the letter C corresponds to Vincino's Italian surname, which is Cassano. Zhang starts laughing when he figures out that Vin has really been a member of the Mafia and he is playing Mafia rules against him. Zhang wants to retaliate, so he sends a dangerous gang to terrorize the tenants at the plaza. Babel's old thug team feels terrible about being replaced by these guys, and they try to fight the gang. However, the thugs are overpowered and they start running that these new guys are members of a notorious gang, but the tenants are not at the mercy of these men. One guy who works as a tailor is revealed to have a fair share of combat experience, and he uses his scissors to defeat the whole gang. Meanwhile, Zhang meets with Cha Young because he pretends to have some valuable information for her while a team of assassins is after Vin. Nam calls Cha Young to tell her about it, and she rushes to find Vin. Zhang follows after the pretense of assisting her while Vin sets the assassins up and kills most of them. He allows one of them to live in order to interrogate him, but the assassin does not reveal what Vin wants to know, which is the true identity of Babel's boss. Soon, Jang and Cha Young find Vin, who has gotten hold of the assassin's phone. Vin says it's time to find out who runs Babel and calls a contact on the assassin's phone. Jang starts feeling nervous as his phone vibrates within his jacket. Vin even walks near him, but he is unable to hear Jang's phone vibrating. The next day, Vin visits Ms. O at the hospital, who tells him about her life's regrets. She reveals that she has abandoned her child in the past because she had no financial resources to take care of her son. Vin has always known this woman is his real mother, and that is why he has had an interest in secretly taking care of her. Later, two policemen enter the plaza and they arrest Vin, because they have been informed he has ties to the Italian Mafia. They will not going to imprison him because they have no real clues against him but they are going to kick him out of the country. Meanwhile, Sun Ho grabs a meal with his brother and asks him to take full control of Babel. Zhang is infuriated hearing those words as he considers his brother an incompetent fool. He grabs a knife and threatens his brother never to ask something like that of him again. Elsewhere, Agent On meets with his agency's chief to tell him they need Vin. Agent On has grown really fond of Vin and convinces the chief that this man is an asset they have against organized crime. The chief gives him the green light and Agent On intercepts the policeman after Judge and interrogates Vin. On has jurisdiction over him and is able to take Vin. When they are out of trouble, On proclaims that he wants to be a member of Vin's team, 
but he also has three requests. The first two requests make some kind of sense while for the third one, he just asks Vin for a hug. Soon, Vin's old friend in the mafia named Luca calls him to tell him that somebody is asking around for him. At the same time, Han meets with Sun Ho again secretly and plays with his mind, telling him that he is worthy of running Babel. Sun Ho knows that his brother will never allow him to do so and considers some more drastic options. Vin suspects something fishy is going on with Judge In, so he abducts him and forces him to play a game of Russian roulette with a pistol. The judge breaks under the pressure and reveals what Vin wants to know, that Jang is the man running Babel, and has been working with him because Jang has connections in high places and can advance his career fast. Right next, Vin visits Jang in his apartment and threatens to kill him. Jang reveals how twisted he is by grabbing the gun and sticking it on his forehead, prompting him to shoot. At that moment, In breaks into the house with the police and is arrested, while Jang pretends to be the victim of this situation. A short legal battle begins between the two parties as Judge and tries to imprison Vin on the charge of attempted murder. On the other hand, Cha Young manages to stop him from doing so, and Vin is free to walk. Jang changes his mind and allows his brother to do some work on behalf of Babel, but that is only because Choi advises him to lay low for a little while. While he spends some time away from the big city, Jang is drugged by drinking some water placed in his fridge by Vin's associates. Vin calls him to demonstrate how powerful and ruthless he is, claiming a win over the president of Babel. Jang is infuriated because he is supposed to have top-notch security. Later, Un gives Vin some good news and reveals that his agency's chief is playing an undercover game with Jang, pretending to be on his side. This means that he will be able to provide them with valuable information if it emerges. But there is more. One of the old prime ministers of the country had ordered the agency to create something called a guillotine file. This file would contain the dirty laundry of the most famous politicians, scientists, artists, etc. If they could somehow find this file, Maybe they could find a way to defeat Babel. Meanwhile, Sun Ho follows his brother on a hunting expedition. When he sees Jang out in the open, he considers this as a chance for him to deal with him. Sun Ho tells his brother that there is an animal in a close distance and gets him in the spot he wants him. Then, he aims his rifle and shoots Jang. Jang manages to get up after he is shot, but he stumbles and falls on the ground again. Sun Ho prepares to finish him off. But another hunter ruins his plan when he walks near them. Sun Ho pretends everything was an accident and asks the man for help. Deep inside his mind, he knows that he is screwed if his brother survives. When they arrive at the hospital, the doctors inform Sun Ho that his brother's wound is not anything serious and that he is going to be fine. Sun Ho pretends he is relieved to hear that, but in reality, he is afraid for his life. Choi is in the room with Jang and they have a short discussion. Choi comments that everybody is making moves against Jang and prompts him to reveal his true identity to the public, letting everyone know that he is the real boss of Babel. In the meantime, Vin meets with Cho and asks him why he tried to steal the gold. Cho is surprised, but Vin has figured out that he was the one who sent those thieves to try to steal the gold. Cho admits that he did it and replies that he owes money to some dangerous people, because he lost a couple of millions while gambling. With the truth revealed, they agree to get the gold together. At the same time, Jang leaves the hospital to attend an event where some rich businessmen will bid to buy floors of the upcoming Babel Tower to use as offices. He reveals himself as the real boss of Babel and starts the bidding. Back at the plaza, Vincenzo sends the tenants to an excursion in order to buy himself time to get some of the gold. Cho uses a device that replicates the Chinese businessman's iris and opens the safe with it. The two men jump inside the room, and they are amazed at the amount of gold they find. All of a sudden, Cho pulls a gun on Vin and tells him that he only needs one plate of gold to pay his debts off. The two of them climb back up, but Vin manages to trick his attention and kicks Cho's gun out of his hands. Vin is able to win their little hand-to-hand -hand battle and grabs the golden plate Cho took from the safe. As Vin reveals, the guillotine file is hidden inside this plate, and that's why Cho only wanted this specific one. Now, Cho reveals that he is a secret agent. He did not steal the data for the businessman's eye from his art gallery, but rather he was the one who killed the businessman by poisoning him. When the man fell dead, Cho scanned his eye with the device he used today. While the two of them converse, the bus with the tenants returns, and the two men rush to close the hatch. Before they do, they throw the golden plate and the device inside the hatch. As for Sun Ho, he goes crazy for a little while because he doesn't know when his last night will be. However, his brother does not punish him but offers him an expensive watch instead. Sun Ho wonders about Jang's plan, 
but the CEO of Babel is pretty clear. He states that he is keeping his brother alive because somebody has to take the blame if things go sideways. The press has started loving Jang, but Vin is working on another surprise for him. One night, Jang attends an event organized by his company to present the new line of cars Babel is preparing to produce. But when the video starts playing, he is surprised to see two high-ranked company executives discussing about killing some union members who were standing in their way. Apart from that, a bucket of pig blood is poured on him as Vin and Cha Yun stand up to applaud him. Sun Ho sees them, and he flashes a smile because he likes seeing his brother defeated. The police storm in and arrest Jang, but the result is the same as always, he is let go. Vincenzo and Cha Young expected this but they are happy they are getting into his head. Nonetheless, Jang stands back on his feet. After attending a meeting with the lawyers and Jang, Sun Ho invites Han to a private talk and basically blames him for telling him that he could be the boss of Babel. Han turns the situation around and says he believed every word he said. He thinks Sun Ho will do much better as compared to his brother and he deserves to get his shot. Sun Ho is motivated by these words and asks Vin to meet him. When they do, he states that he loves seeing Vin winning over his brother. He wants to help Vincenzo defeat his brother and then rule the company. Vincenzo can't see why he should help but Sun Ho claims that things will change once he becomes the decision maker at Babel. He wants to run Babel as a totally legal company. Over the next couple of days, Vincenzo discovers that Babel uses other companies as a way to launder money. He also discovers that one of the tenants, Miss Sho, is a hacker who can help him steal some data. One of the companies used by Babel is an art gallery, so Vincenzo decides to visit it along with Cha Young. As they do, some of the other tenants create a distraction and the couple of lawyers enter the manager's office. They use a flash drive given to them by the hacker and they steal all the data from the computer. With that, they have even more evidence to use against Babel. Zhang learns about this incident and decides to retaliate by hiring three new assassins to kill Vincenzo. The assassins corner him at the roof, but Vin is miraculously saved by a horde of pigeons. Eventually, he kills the assassins and makes Zhang even more angry. The war between the two parties goes on and on, as Vincenzo prepares to make his next move. But before that, he reveals to his team that he has the guillotine file in his possession. He stole it from inside the golden plate before he threw it back in the hatch. Using the file, they learn about the rumors circling around a man named Zhang Bi, the owner of a company who was going to sign a contract with Babel shortly. According to the rumors, Zhang Bi pushed his business partner off a cliff in order to become the sole owner of his company. Vincenzo spends some time learning some valuable details about Zhang Bi's story and then pretends to be a medium who can communicate with the soul of his dead partner. Vincenzo supposedly delivers a message from the spirit and convinces Zhang Bi not to sign the contract with Babel. Zhang finally starts feeling angry because Babel's stock price is going down. It seems like Vin's war against him is hurting the company. The CEO of Babel comes up with a new idea to get rid of Vin. He sends an assassin after him, but Vin is able to defend himself and goes after him. The assassin runs to the roof of the building and when Vin follows him there, a body dropped from some height. At the same time, the police are notified, and a few officers find Vin with the dead body, assuming that he is the one who killed the man. However, Vin beats them up and escapes. Meanwhile, the assassin tries to leave the building but he stumbles upon the former thugs of Babel. The thugs catch the assassin and take him to Vin, who forces him to give his associates location. After beating them up, Vin forces them to give themselves in, and he is now free of any charges. Zhang feels defeated again but he is not going to back down. While Vincenzo spends some time with his biological mother, Zhang works on his next attack. He uses a woman to pretend she is a cleaning lady, and she installs an explosive device inside the building. That night, the device is activated and one of the gas pipes is cut. The tenants start evacuating the building, but they will not have much time to do so because the woman has also left a bomb behind. Luckily, two firemen find the bomb in the form of a watch. Vincenzo sees them holding it, and he runs to grab the watch and toss it outside the window. Zhang unleashes his fury on his brother, until Choi walks into his office with a picture of Vin's biological mother. Zhang recognizes this opportunity and asks Choi to make their next move. Choi gets one of their guys outside prison and entrusts him with the mission of killing Ms. Oh. The man enters the hospital at night and pretends to be a nurse. He manages to gain access to Ms. Oh's room and kills her. Zhang and his allies celebrate, but Vin has already started looking for the one who killed his mother. Vincenzo reviews the security footage from the hospital and figures out who killed his mother. He finds the man soon and teaches him a lesson. 
However, he keeps him alive and tortures him instead of killing him. Vin wants to know who gave him the order and allows the man to run to his boss if he wants to stay alive. The man leads him directly to Jang's country house. The security guards try to stop Vincenzo, but the consigliere is dedicated to finishing his mission. Once he finds the others, he shoots the killer dead, terrifying everyone. Vincenzo shoots some bullets around his enemies and states that they are going to die. However, they are not going to die today with a bullet because that would be too easy on them. First, he will steal what's theirs, and then he will kill them. But before he leaves the house, Vin demonstrates he is serious about this by shooting Jang's ear. The next morning, Jang wakes up in a bad mood and snaps at his brother, slapping him across the face. He also yells at lawyer Choi because he is expecting her to come up with a solution to get rid of Vin, who seems to be unbeatable. Soon, Jang repeats the event of selling office spaces at the upcoming Babel Tower, but one of his former subordinates, who now works for Vincenzo, bursts into the place with a bomb on his body and another one hidden under a big cake. Vin uses the room's speakers to give directions to the people attending the event, who are now locked into the room. He tells them that they need to stay away from Babel if they want to stay alive, prompting them to eat the contracts they signed at this event. One by one, all the business people who bought office spaces at this event start eating the papers they signed. Eventually, Vin allows them to go by opening the doors. Simultaneously, the supposed bomb explodes, but it is just some water spraying around. In the meantime, Han has begun feeling scared, and he meets with a very wealthy man who's in real estate to ask for his protection. All parties work against each other. Vin gathers more information on Babel via the agency's chief who attends the private meetings with Jang and records them. On the other hand, Jang has been working on his own plot. When Sun Ho meets with Vin again, things are awkward between the two of them, and they both pull a gun on one another. However, they are interrupted by Interpol, who is here to arrest Vincenzo. Vincenzo was shot during this confrontation, and the agents approach him to check on him. Vin suddenly jumps up and holds them at gunpoint taking everyone to a container. There, he kills a few of the agents and tells the other ones to go back where they came from. In return for not bothering him anymore, he will give them enough evidence to make another arrest, his stepbrother Paolo in Italy. During this whole time, Vin and Cha Young have been building a strong case against Babel. When some reporters approach them, they make some bold statements, saying that Babel is going down. The war between Vin and Zhang rages, while Han now becomes a district judge due to his powerful friends. When Vin has a talk with him, he threatens him to find a reason to throw Zhang in jail for a couple of months or else he will die. Vincenzo knows that Zhang is not going to stay in prison forever but that is not his plan anyway. He just wants to give Babel's president a difficult time. When Zhang is behind bars, Vincenzo visits him in order to taunt him. However, Zhang has a powerful ally of his own, a politician named Kim. Kim has his men attack Cho, and he learns about the gold at the plaza. One night, he takes his muscle and visits the plaza, but the tenants fight back and push Kim away with some help from Vin and Agent On. Then, the female hacker manages to open the hatch by using her computer, and the tenants transfer all the gold away from the plaza. As for Kim, he wakes up near a dumpster with a terrible headache. After a while, it is time for the good guys to fight Babel in court again, but no final decision is reached. Sun Ho gets his hopes up and meets with Han to hear the words he loves, that he will be able to take over Babel if his brother goes down. But soon, Jang is out of jail and starts showing everybody how angry he is. First, he attacks and abducts Cha Young. Then, he enters his brother's office and holds him at gunpoint. However, he does not finish him but rather hits him hard. When Sun Ho wakes up, he finds himself in the same room as Cha Young. Of course, none of them is surprised, because they know what kind of person Sun Ho is. Vin proceeds to find them, but his hands are tied because Jang has his gun on Cha Young's face. Sun Ho attacks his brother out of a sudden, and chaos ensues. Eventually, Jang tries to shoot Vincenzo, but Cha Young is the one to take the hit. Sun Ho tries to stop his brother once more, but Jang is ruthless and shoots him. Then, Jang sees Vin holding Cha Young in his arms and has the perfect shot available. He pulls the trigger, but his gun is empty. He knows he is screwed so he decides to run away. Cha Young is stable, but when Vin checks on Sun Ho, the latter dies in his hands. The next morning, Cha Young wakes up in a hospital but she is going to be fine. Later, Vincenzo meets with Agent On and gives him the guillotine file because he trusts him to do the right thing with it. The only thing left to do now for Vincenzo is to kill his enemies. He starts by killing Han and then waits for Choi in her room. 
while she tries to escape. After torturing her, he pours petroleum on her and burns her. Finally, a mixed group of tenants and ex-babble thugs intercept Jang. Some shots are exchanged. But Vincenzo joins the scene and shoots Jang twice on his legs. Then, he puts him in his car and drives away with him before the police can find them. When Jang wakes up, he is tied to a chair with a drilling machine near his chest. After the two of them exchange some final words, Vin programs the machine to drill into Jang's body and just walks away, leaving him to die a slow, painful death. Right next, Vin meets with An and Cho, who give him a passport and greet him goodbye. But before he leaves the country, Cha Young appears to say goodbye, wishing for them to have more time together in the future. Gradually, every piece falls into place, and Cha Young sends all the bad guys in jail. A few months later, Cha Young's law firm has become one of the most trusted firms in the country. Vincenzo visits Cha Young to congratulate her on her accomplishments, and the two of them share their first kiss. Although Vincenzo has to go, everything remains open for them and they might see each other again.